Xbox On. Welcome to Xbox On, a podcast with one host about one console, Xbox. I'm said host, Jesse DeRosa, and on today's episode, we'll be talking about the latest Xbox news for the week of May 4th, 2023, including... Redfall is out now, and it's not going over well for Xbox. We have a official date for the Xbox and Bethesda Summer Showcase event taking place in June, and more. On this day in Xbox history, in the year 2007, 16 years ago, my god, Spider-Man 3 was released for the Xbox 360 in the United States. Yeah, that was, uh, what, a week or two? Was it a day? No, well, the movie it came out, I think, on the 5th, right? No, it was the day. It was the 4th. Okay, so they, they came out day and date. Why did I know... The fifth is close. The fact that I remember the release date of a movie from 16 years ago, or within a day of it. Anyway, Spider-Man 3, Xbox 360, developed by Treyarch, published by, uh, of course, Activision. Yeah, that was before. That was before Call of Duty, World at War, and Black Ops, and all that. God, it's... Yeah, anyway. Of course, everyone knows when it comes to the Spider-Man licensed movie games, Spider-Man 2 was the best. You know, Spider-Man 3, I feel like, never really got a whole lot of attention. It is not as good as Spider-Man 2, for sure, but... It is still pretty good. It's the same kind of game. You know, it's Spider-Man 1, based on the 2002 movie with Green Goblin. Very different level-based, third-person action platform, whatever game. Superhero game, generic a little bit. Uh, but Spider-Man 2, obviously, famously revolutionized, or, you know, arguably the greatest movie tie-in license game ever made. Uh, but, you know, basically GTA Spider-Man, as we would have referred to it back in, in the, the, the old year 2004. Of course, you know, still regarded as one of the best this day to this day. But Spider-Man 3 just didn't have the same special sauce. And I don't, I don't really know what it was because it was more of what Spider-Man 2 was. But it just, I don't know, something about a more polished, expanded on version of that game ended up being somewhat reductive. Or I wonder if it's just the fact that, you know, in the time, the short time between 2004 and 2007, a lot changed in gaming, you know. You know, something like Spider-Man 2 in 2004, running on the OG Xbox, was really impressive, considering the only other alternative was, like, Grand Theft Auto 3, right? But Spider-Man 3 in 2007 was like, eh, this isn't as impressive. We've got fucking, uh, I don't know, Morrowind on Xbox 360. We don't care about I, I I don't really know what the real reason is, but Spider-Man 3, it definitely didn't... Yeah, I only beat this game, for, for reference, as a kid who's, whose entire childhood was you know, determined, you know, was made, I don't know how I'm trying to say this, as someone whose entire childhood was dependent on the Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, I must say, I only ever beat Spider-Man 3, like, once on Wii, once on DS, and, like, three or four times on Xbox 360, which is not a whole lot compared to the fact that I probably beat Spider-Man 2 on the PS2, that's the platform I had it for, I probably beat Spider-Man 2 on PS2, maybe 20 times i'd say i'm not even kidding i'd probably be in that game probably at least at least 15 and then you know dozens and dozens of hours into it otherwise and then uh you know i also played on the game Boy advance i played on the ds i played that game many many times before i think i rented it once on the xbox or not on the xbox but the gamecube just to see if it would feel any different than the ps2 version uh surprise surprise it didn't um but anyway yeah shout out to spider-man 3 also shout out to the movie spider-man 3 because I don't, I don't care what they say. That I know that movie was put through development hell because Sony fucked it up. Columbia Pictures, Sony, too much studio interference. Sam Raimi kind of resents the movie. Everyone kind of considers it the weaker one. But even though Spider-Man 2 is technically the better movie, I still think Spider-Man 3 is a really damn good movie. And uh, it's just underappreciated. I was watching a little bit. It came to Disney Plus the other week. I was watching a little bit of it the other night. I'm like, you know what? I still love this movie to death. I still love this game. And uh, shout out to Spider-Man 3. I cannot believe it was 16 years ago. I remember the day it came out, my mom picked up me and my friends from fifth grade and took us to the theater to watch it opening day. And then, uh, yeah, and then we never got another Spider-Man movie again until 2012 when Mark Webb and Andrew Garfield made me cry with the amazing Spider-Man movie. But not, not a good cry, a bad cry. 
Although I've come around on that movie a little bit as well over the years. Anyway, guys, let's let's talk about Xbox. It's not a Spider-Man podcast. Could be a Spider-Man podcast. I'd probably I'd probably have almost enough enthusiasm to do a weekly Spider-Man podcast. The only superhero that could command that much fucks uh, for me to give. But uh, wait, this isn't a Spider-Man podcast. In fact, it's increasingly less and less of a Spider-Man podcast as we see Spider-Man games become more and more aligned exclusively with PlayStation. Uh, so that's a uh, damn. How long is it going to be before we see a Spider-Man game on Xbox again? I don't want to think about that. All right, guys. Welcome to Xbox On. We're going to talk about games that are coming to Xbox this week because we got a couple notable releases this week. Uh, actually, in fact, I'd say the second most important game coming to Xbox this year has come out this week. And obviously, you know what I'm fucking talking about. This, this is no surprise. It's the talk of the town. Redfall is officially out. The course Game Pass title, uh, technically X par- Xbox first party title from developer Arcane. This is a, uh, you know, from from the from the people that brought you Prey, <laughs> bring you. It's important to keep in mind Arcane has two teams. Um, so this is the team that made Prey in Austin, Texas. Um, their other team is in like Lyon, France or whatever, and they make the Dishonored and games and and Death Loop. So this is the other uh, Arcane team. But yeah, Redfall officially out. Obviously, Game Pass release. We'll get into all of that. So this, this week's a little odd because there isn't a whole lot of news news. But we we all got more than enough to say about Redfall. So we will save it for the main news segment, not the one I've been playing. We'll get into it during the main news segment. We're going to predominantly talk about Redfall, and uh, just because I'm not trying to be a clickbait spoiler or a, a clickbait, uh, you know, watch until the end kind of whatever the hell it is that drives people nuts. I'll, I'll tell you straight up. I I got a lot of things to say about this game. I want to get into the discourse, the kind of the the absolute shit this game is receiving, and a lot of it deservedly so. But also, I'm not I'm not that down on it. I kind of like this game. So, I have many much much more to say than that. But uh, I am excited to get into that later in the show. The other game that comes out this week is Ravenlock, um, which is out the day this podcast goes live, May fourth. Also a day one Game Pass release. This is only for PC and Xbox, so it's kind of rare. We, it's a, it's an indie second party kind of exclusive although i'm sure it's timed i'm sure this will come to probably switch and ps5 at a later date but ravenlock it's kind of like um 3d with a little pixely shade kind of art style overlay um zelda like game and it looks pretty cool it's got like uh it's got like the fantastical flair of zelda mixed with a little bit of like modern day normal planet earth our kind of world shit and it's got a really interesting art style and graphical style and I think this is a game that is going to probably intrigue a lot of people, especially considering a lot of Xbox people are no doubt like any other gamer exposed to a lot of Nintendo growing up. And then if you mostly dedicate yourself to Xbox, um, you probably don't get a lot of Zelda in your life anymore. So this will be nice to have a little something like this loaded into Game Pass, especially a mere week before the Nintendo Switch gets a brand new Zelda game. So no doubt there's a little bit of a intentional timing with this release date. Yeah, I don't know. Ravenlock looks pretty cool. I do plan on giving it a try at some point. I'm not going to, I'm probably definitely not going to beat this game unless it just completely wows me, but I do want to give it a go and just kind of see what it, what it is. Cause I played some Zelda clones in my life that, uh, have definitely, have definitely grabbed me. Shout out to It'll Do, which was a, uh, Wii U, uh, virtual console title. That game was pretty cool. Anyway, But, uh, guys, let's get the only boring thing we have to talk about this week out of the way. Let's just get it out of the way with our Activision updates, and then we'll move on to the rest of the show. I promise the rest of the show this week is going to be entertaining. It's just this Activision update stuff. You know how it goes. We just got to read you the headline updates. Unless there's something super cool and exciting, we're just going to go through the updates of the week so we can all be up to, you know, versed up to date as the title suggests. And then we move on with our merry lives because who the hell wants to talk about this anymore? But uh, VGC's got a couple updates here. Activision Blizzard said that they are expecting an accelerated appeals process following the merger with Microsoft being blocked by the UK uh, CMA, Competition Regulator. Um, So following the block last week, Microsoft Activision quickly confirmed their intention to appeal the CMA's decision, which Bobby Kotick, CEO of Activision, slammed as an irrational decision and not based on fact during an interview with CNBC earlier this week. He said, quote, when you look at the facts and you look at what the opportunities are for the UK, that's dude, that's how you know someone's PR trained. Phil Spencer talks the same way. That is the mark of a PR trained person. When you look at the facts and you look at the opportunities, it's like no one talks that way. 
speak English. Anyway, but when you look at those facts and opportunities and what they are for the UK, this was a transaction that was only going to enhance opportunity for competition for our players, for employees, and it was just a flawed ruling in every respect. Uh, and it was demonstrated to us that these regulators, they don't really understand our business. He added, it was also so flawed in every way that it's actually going to create a lessening of competition, which is the opposite of what their mission is. And so we think an appeals tri- uh, we think that the appeals tribunal will see that rule in our favor. The case is set to be reviewed by the UK's competition appeal tribunal. According to the website, it also uh, aims to compete, uh, complete straightforward cases in less than nine months. But Kodak and Activision and Microsoft are anticipating the case to be fast-tracked. Quote, I think that we are, uh, and, and Microsoft and our, and our barristers, I've never, I don't think I've ever used that word before, who are exceptionally experienced at judicial review, think that there's a way to accelerate the process and that the conclusions were so flawed that they should be able to get uh, an accelerated result. Whether or not the case can be wrapped up before the current merger agreement expires on July 18th, after which Activision Blizzard could walk away with a $3 billion termination fee, remains to be seen. Quote, I can't tell you, this is the last quote before he rounds it out, I can't tell you what the timing will be yet because we haven't filled out our appeals briefing, but we'll be uh, able to get a lot more detail over the course of the next week and really better understand the timing and what that will be, Kodak said. So obviously, Activision and Microsoft, if there's one thing there is to say about these two, it's that they are both seemingly gung-ho about wanting to make this happen. It is not like a like a one uh, one team wants it more than the other. So for for this July 18th deadline to come up and for one, you know, for Microsoft to have the ability to just pay the $3, million, $3 billion and get out of it or for Activision to just be able to take the $3 billion and get out of it, it doesn't seem like that's what either party wants. It seems like they, they're both eager to fight for this. And again, at the end of the day, our world is completely run by corporations. So if Microsoft and Activision want to want to get married and do kissy face, like they're, they're going to do it, right? Like it's, they're not going to let a government body stop them from doing that. It's just kind of, unfortunately, in some cases, unfortunately, actually, in general, unfortunately, that is just kind of how the world works. So um, in, in this case, I think it's kind of silly because this this deal is, God, like, does anybody even give a shit anymore? But yeah, whatever. If only they could put this much, uh, this much, if only governments could put this much emphasis into, like, things that actually mattered. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe homelessness wouldn't be a thing. But uh, anyway, let's move on with, Uh, other things that don't matter. Uh, Continuing with the Microsoft, uh, we got two much smaller updates following that long-winded quote from Mr. Kodak uh, as he was fondling one of his female employees while also writing a memo to his entire staff saying that uh, female discrimination is wrong in the workplace. VGC also reports that Microsoft have announced another game distribution agreement designed to um, to allay regulatory concerns over its proposed Activision Blizzard deal on Friday. Microsoft uh, confirmed that they signed a 10-year agreement to stream Xbox PC Game Pass with Activision Blizzard titles included, should the deal close, with Spanish cloud gaming platform Nware. Um, Never heard of them, but again, they're just doing the thing. Like, look at all these European companies. Look at all these companies everywhere we're partnering with. We're obviously trying to put more games in more players' hands, and we're we're increasing the number of platforms these games will be available on. You can't tell us that we're dominating or monopolizing the cloud space, and... uh, yeah, it's a, I, I thought it was a good strategy for them until it didn't work, but we'll see how it goes. And the last update here is that Microsoft's proposed Activision Blizzard deal has been approved by Ukraine's Anti-Monopoly Committee. In a statement released on Thursday, the regulator said that it was concerned that the $69 billion deal might lead to a substantial lessening of competition in relevant markets. Uh, the deal has... or. They said they weren't concerned, I I should clarify. Uh, The deal has also been approved in Saudi Arabia, Brazil, Serbia, Chile, Chile, uh, Japan, and South Africa for those uh, keeping count at home. So, yeah, there are your Activision updates of the week. Uh, I mean, if you want more Activision updates, Season 3 Reloaded of Modern Warfare 2 was just teased hours before I started recording. But I assume most of you don't want to hear that other than to say um, what that one basketball guy is going to be in the game. So that's cool. It's awesome when Warzone has... uh, Shredder and Godzilla and uh, NBA and NFL and MLB and TCP stars running around shooting. Uh, I don't know who's in Modern Warfare 2 Mexican Special Forces and random, vaguely Middle Eastern terrorists. Anyway, let's, let's move on. Guys, generally we skip right over the correction segment of the show because I don't do anything wrong. I'm a saint, but unfortunately, this, this week I, I got a correction. 
not a specific correction, not a well-researched correction, but a correction nonetheless in which Kronky, my brother, wrote in and just wanted to kind of school me a little bit because he said I gave him an aneurysm last week with my uh, with my talk about the real-time strategy genre and how it's kind of dead. We don't see a lot of it anymore. We don't see a lot of first-party support for RTS. We don't see a lot of it in the console space. And he goes, there are a lot more RTS games today than there were in the late 90s or early 2000s, as you suggested, but gaming has grown so much in the genre that the genre feels small smaller today. There's a lot of great ones these days on console and PC, and it's gotten a ton of support from the last one or two years. So stop spouting anti-RTS propaganda. Um, no, it wasn't my intention. Listen, I still kind of stand by what I said, because I understand what you're saying. There are more gamers in the world today than there were 20 years ago. There are more, there's more ability for creators to put games out into the marketplace, especially with storefronts like Steam. And so, yeah, of course, there are a lot more RTS games that exist today. I understand there are a lot of RTS games that are quietly massive successes that we're not talking about here on Xbox On because it's not Call of Duty or Halo or Sonic Unleashed. I get it. I get it. There's a lot of big games out there that I'm not necessarily aware of, and that's you know the industry's just grown that big to where you can feel in the know with the mainstream information, and then you know there's a sub community of a sub community that's got all this shit going on, making tons of money, making waves and announcements, and it's got its own dedicated base. And I know nothing about these games or this community or anything, and that's kind of where RTS to some extent falls. Where I, I know these games are very big, uh, but again. When I ask people what kind of games you're looking forward to, people are talking about the game with the lightsaber, the game with the gun in the face, the game with the fucking uh, wooden stick on the British kid's hand in the face, uh, the game with the fucking uh, Suicide Squad that keeps getting delayed because nobody likes the trailers. And these are the games people talk about. They talk about like AAA palpable E3 hype level type games where it's like, ah, oh, this game, you know, I can't tell you the last time the, the conversations be like, ah, oh, this real time strategy. I can't wait to build my bases and fortify my defenses and then attack the opposing team. Like no one, no one does that anymore is what I'm saying. So I stand by what I said, because while you're right, there are more RTSs on the market today. There are more people playing RTSs on uh, today. It's just point stands. It's just there's no there's no like mainstream coverage hype and uh, just fervor for this genre. And so that's what I'm saying is I just uh, I just wish, as someone who does love this genre, that there was a little bit of a there was a little bit of a public love and in, 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 in embracement of this genre. We don't see it. The closest thing we'd see to this is MOBAs, and MOBAs make me want to go into the into the boys' bathroom and stick my finger all the way down the back of my throat and go puke. So, all right, that's my correction. That's that's the most you'll ever see me admit I did anything wrong. And uh, with that said, we will move on to our mildly amusing stories and updates, things of that nature. If you're if you're here just for the Redfall talk uh, on YouTube and on podcast services, I believe I put timestamps in the description. So click to the news. It will say probably news in parentheses, Redfall. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're going to go through our stories of mild amusement for, I don't know, this usually lasts between 20 and 40 minutes every week. And then, uh, and then we'll talk about Redfall for a long ass time. All right. Starting off with a, a story that normally would be like one of the top stories of the week, but I pushed it here because it is big news. So that's why it's at the top here, but I just, there's not too, too much to say about it. So we can have a little discussion about it here and then save the rest for this uh, long winded Redfall talk. All right. This first story is of course that Microsoft have announced the, uh, the time, the date and time for the summer Xbox game showcase, the digital event, which was previously confirmed to be taking place on Sunday, June 11th, uh, will begin at 10 a.m. Pacific time, or more importantly, 1 p.m. Eastern time on, on June 11th, Sunday, June 11th. So, yeah, we, we always know it's going to be that first, second Sunday of June. So that's no surprise. We had that date already, and now we got a time and everything for it. So uh, they, they also give us some details as to what we can expect. So it's not clear exactly how long the showcase will be. Historically, these have been about 90 minutes or so, uh, but we know that we will get a, a Starfield direct presentation with a deep dive on Bethesda's new sci-fi RPG that will happen immediately after this event. So we'll get our, our typical Xbox digital event showcase where they'll talk about here are all your trailers and gameplay deep dives and empty promises for games that may or may not come out in your lifetime. Fable, I'm looking at you. And we'll get that for probably about 90 minutes or so. Uh, may, maybe even less, I don't know. And then they'll dive right into the Starfield direct presentation after that where we will get a chunky meaty look at Starfield and no doubt they will uh you know if there's an opportunity to delay it we'll find out probably at that point but um yeah I mean that's 
That's that's what we're waiting for, right? Uh, their announcement reads, Join us for some new surprises and a first look at the incredibly talented internal studios and our many creative partners around the world, Microsoft said in the announcement. This is a day gamers have been waiting for to see what's coming for Xbox, PC, and Game Pass. Starfield Direct will invite you into Bethesda Game Studios uh, to learn much, much more about Starfield with tons of new gameplay, developer interviews, and behind-the-scenes insider information. On June 11th, show the the june 11th shows will be viewable on platforms including youtube twitch and facebook rip mixer a follow-up stream xbox game showcase extended which they usually do in recent years will air on june 13th two days later on tuesday at 1 p.m eastern time and will feature in-depth interviews focus on news from the main showcase plus game updates on third-party partners blah, blah 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 usually it's like a 30 minute to an hour long event uh this june 13th thing where they will take like the, the four biggest games from the showcase on Sunday and do like deep dives on them. And they'll be like, here's a, a new seasonal update for Sea of Thieves. Here is a Forza DLC. Here's an update on that Fable game you're never actually going to play. And uh, that's kind of stuff you expect at a, a showcase like that. Guys, obviously this is exciting. We're all hyped for it. We're about, you know, at the time this show is going out, we're about five weeks away from this event. So... Yeah, five, five and a half weeks away from this event happening. So, you know, Redfall is out. We're about a month away from learning about what the next 12 months of Xbox will look like. Seeing real in-depth Starfield footage. Uh, The trajectory and the conversation surrounding Xbox, you know, starting with Redfall now being out, is going to change dramatically over the, you know, next month or so. So lots and lots to dissect, lots and lots to talk about. And, you know, let's be honest, as someone who has to write and host a podcast about Xbox every week, it's been dry lately, especially the last couple months. But, yeah, the last year has been kind of kind of shit. 2022 was a terrible year for Xbox, no doubt about it. And uh, the, the main story we've been talking about for the past year and a half has just been Activision Blizzard, deal, legal stuff, stuff we're not qualified to talk about. Like, let's be honest, we're not qualified. I'm not qualified to talk about it. I'm sure as hell not. I'm trying to give you you know, interpretation analysis based on my very, very, very limited understanding of how anything works. And, you know, it's, it's a boring story to have to follow after, you know, it was super hype for a while there. And then after about a month of it, it was like, okay, this is going to get old fast. You know, we're talking about it a year and a half later. So Xbox news has been slow. It's been boring. It's been not that great overall. You know, the release schedule has been a little weak. We've had some flops. We've had some mild successes. We haven't had a show stopping game in a, in a while, so for this event to be, you know, on, uh, for us to be on the precipice of this game of this event, and for us to get a really deep dive into Starfield, which is coming out in just a couple months, you know, it's things are shaking up for Xbox. Maybe just maybe the fortunes will, you know, the 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 the, 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 the fortune will favor us bold or whatever the quote is. Fa- uh, favor fortunes, fortune favors the bold, um, but. Uh, We'll have to just wait and see. I, I, I'll be honest. Generally, I try to keep my expectations in check, but I'm really hungry for, for news on Xbox. So even though I feel like Xbox has personally let me down at their past couple events, and I just feel like Xbox in general has been disappointing the past couple of years, I'm still pretty hyped about this game because I think, and maybe this conversation should be had after our, our Redfall discussion, but I really think at this point, if Xbox doesn't understand, and I feel like we probably said this exact same thing this time last year, but if Xbox really doesn't understand at this point that they got to fucking get it right, they got to show something substantive, they got to have really exciting things on the horizon, deep dive gameplay demos, soon release dates, promising content, just, just something, dude, something for the love of Christ, then could you really blame people for like just, you know, we talked about last week, Xbox hardware is down 30% last quarter. You know, revenue for the for Xbox is up from subscriptions and microtransactions and all the rest, games. But hardware is down 30%. And that's at a time where PlayStation 5 is clobbering the year-to-date sale, the the yeah, the year-to-date sales of PS4. So, you know, the, the difference is night and day. And it sucks because when Xbox Series X and S first came out. They were doing pretty damn well, you know, compared to PS5. It was a much stronger competition than what we saw with Xbox One and PS4 out the gate. So Xbox was out to a good, they were up, they were off to a good start at the beginning of the generation. But they have quickly burned any bit of goodwill they have earned with Halo, with last year being just a complete dry spell, with 
everything that's going on so far this year. And I mean, they, they got to understand like they, something's going to happen at this event. We got to see something, man. So I'm excited because I think they're not stupid. You know, they're not stupid. They, they know that they have to bring the goods and so I think we're in for a treat. I really, truly believe it. But also, I feel like a broken record saying this. But yeah, man, this event, I have high hopes for it. I have high expectations. And generally, I try to keep those things tempered. So I I, I say this with a, a bit of confidence. Not an educated amount of confidence, but an arbitrary amount of confidence. So I'm looking forward to it. June 11th, got that shit marked on my ca- marked on my calendar. I thank God every day that I don't work in the uh, restaurant industry anymore because it used to be such a pain in the ass when it's like, I'm going to have to request off a day from work just to watch Xbox put a fucking car on stage and talk about Forza Motorsport 7 or some shit like that. But no, I don't work in the restaurant industry. Thank you. Thank you, God. Uh, that doesn't happen anymore. I have weekends off, so I will be probably uh, uh, mowing my non-existent lawn and then coming in, drinking an iced tea, and then sitting down and enjoying some Xbox game announcements. Do you think we'll find out what the fuck contraband is? I sure hope so. All right, let's talk about these other ones. That's the big one. Um, but let's talk about some other things before we get into the main news and really get into this uh, this Redfall discussion. Star Wars Jedi Survivor, uh, second biggest physical game launch in the UK for the year, right behind Hogwarts Legacy. So the game is doing insanely well. Um, It's the eighth biggest Star Wars box release in the past 30 years, despite opening week sales coming 35% lower than what its predecessor, Fallen Order, managed. That's not a really great look. But it's worth emphasizing that the uh, data is for box sales only. So, of course, you probably assume that digital sales are up is what that really means. So, you know, Fallen Order came out. That was twenty twenty. That was twenty nineteen, right? So yeah, it was twenty nineteen. So I was right before the pandemic. I feel like the pandemic's one of those things that kicked into high gear, the transition from physical to digital media. So I wouldn't be surprised if the game is doing better than Fallen Order. It's just, you know, digital sales. Anyway, also, uh, let's see. Oh, also the game. This is not good. The game. Eighty two percent of Jedi Survivor sales were on PlayStation Five, while eighteen percent of the game sales were on Xbox. So. Again, that's uh, not good, especially considering half of Xbox or the better selling of Xbox's modern consoles is uh, digital only. So, or actually, that that explains. Sorry, that explains um, why that's probably the case for Xbox. But also, you gotta consider Game Pass. So, Game Pass is probably deterring people from buying new games, which has largely in long been a topic of discussion. But also because Series S doesn't have a physical disc drive, of course. Uh, more digital copies are going to be sold on Xbox, and because PlayStation Five disc this sorry the the four hundred dollar disc less PS Five is basically a fucking lie because it doesn't exist. No one has one. I've never seen one on store shelves, and nobody I know has ever had one or seen one. Um, the majority of PlayStation owners have a disc drive, so it is very different. Series S is cheaper, therefore it outsells Series X. It's also more readily available. So Series S, the discless version of Xbox's console, is the more predominant version. PlayStation uh, announced a discless version of their PS5 and then proceeded to manufacture four units of it. Um, So congrats to the four lucky bastards that got a PS5 for $400. But uh, the rest of the world has a PS5 with a disk drive. So that, uh, um, yeah, that is worth noting. That's probably, but still... 18% 18% on Xbox. I mean, that's taken in consideration more digital sales on Xbox and PlayStation. It's taken in consideration. Game Pass has probably changed the buying habits of some users. And it's taken into consideration the fact that PlayStation is just way out selling Xbox. So when you put all that into in, in perspective, it's not as bad, but 82% to 18. Doesn't look good. Anyway, let's talk about um, uh, from VGC, Microsoft possibly buying a different mobile game publisher at one point before Activision. After months of investigation on Wednesday, the CMA published its final 418-page report on the deal uh, with about Activision Blizzard in which it revealed Microsoft previously attempted to buy a different mobile game publisher. Uh, so apparently at one point, Microsoft was looking to buy someone other than you know Activision Blizzard King, the mobile component of Activision Blizzard. Uh, quote, we know Microsoft's submission that Activision has significant strength in mobile gaming and the and it is considered uh, that the presence of Activision's games on any mobile gaming store would enhance its competitiveness. 
However, we also consider that this would be achieved to a less anti-competitive means than the merger, and Microsoft could acquire attractive content and experience with player engagement and acquisition by buying a different mobile games publisher, and it appears to have been Microsoft's strategy and attempt to buy Redacted, quote, in Redacted, and it said Redacted. So we'll stop right there for a second. I wonder what that Redacted is, because that's the that's the name of the of the publisher and all that information and who said it. So was it Rovio? Was it Angry Birds before Sega swooped in and took them? <laughs> uh, the CMA continued in their report. We also consider that the launch... Uh, to launch a competitive mobile platform, Microsoft would need a significant quantity of variety of games. This would likely involve making agreements with third-party publishers in a similar way it does with its current console and PC games. Microsoft has not provided evidence that this uh, that, that its entry attempt would be sufficiently relying on Activision's games alone for mobile. For this reason, we disagree that Activision's content or content contention, sorry, that the competing mobile game store could only be achieved if the content was from a single organization. That's uh, something we had to read just because it's technically about Xbox and acquisitions. However, it's specifically about mobile, so it's boring as fuck. But yeah, I mean, we know Microsoft wants their mobile app store thing that they want to put on iOS and Android. We know that they're trying to get more aggressive about mobile. And, you know, between cloud streaming and and everyone having a a freaking iPhone or Samsung or whatever in their pocket, it just makes sense to go out there that market because there's a lot of potential to get new Game Pass subscribers if uh, everyone already has the hardware required to engage in the content. So, obviously, we, we know it makes sense for Microsoft to be trying to acquire mobile game publishers, uh, but we just don't know which one this was. But needless to say, if this deal with Activision doesn't go through, Microsoft probably will get more aggressive about trying to acquire in the mobile space. However, I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to do that even with the acquisition of Activision because King is is a very very big player, but there are there are other there are other ones. What is it? Pop City and Pogo Pogo Logo or some bullshit like that. There's tons of these little mobile mobile companies, and then there's like a million Chinese ones that own all the fucking Pokemon and fucking anime titty games or something like that. But yeah, I, I'm not versed in the world of mobile gaming and I'm, I'm falling asleep at, at, you know, in front of the microphone, just thinking about mobile gaming. So we're going to move on from there. Uh, even if that is bad or insufficient reporting, because the next and last thing we have to talk about for mildly amusing stories is something that I do care about. And something that you probably also care about a lot more than mobile gaming, which is Titanfall. So a couple little things we heard about Titanfall this week. Uh, from VGC and Reese in, in a CEO interview, Respawn CEO uh, speaking with Barons, Vince Zampella, CEO of Respawn, said that he'd love to see Titanfall three happen. Although it's it's it stopped short of committing to a return to the franchise. Uh, speaking to Barons, Zampella claimed that Respawn's not working on anything currently as far as Titanfall three goes. He says, "I hate to say yes, but people latch onto that and then they skewer skewer you when it doesn't come true." But I would love to see it happen, and there's a real answer. There is no exact dedicated plans for that game, but, yeah, he'd love to see it happen. Zampella continued and says, it, it has to be the right thing, right? It's such a beloved franchise for the fans and also for us. It's not the right moment in time, the right idea. Then it just doesn't make sense. Apex Legends is in the Titanfall universe, right? So how do you know something that doesn't confuse people that are Apex fans but not necessarily Titanfall fans yet? It's a hard question to answer, but ultimately, I'd love to see something. However, that's not the only bit of news we got from Respawn this week because a, quote, very small team is in the early stages of developing an original IP at Respawn Entertainment. In an interview with Axios, Respawn boss Vance Zampella also said that Skunk Works, a team led by Steven Fukuda, uh, the game director of Titanfall 1 and 2, uh, is working on a, a, a new project in early stages with a very small team. Quote, the mission is to find something fun and new. Uh, said Zampella. In January, Respawn owner EA reportedly canceled an unannounced Titanfall game that was being planned as a single-player experience for Apex Legends that was that was axed, uh, as well as the mobile team uh, behind Apex Legends getting laid off and that studio being shut down and the mobile version of the game being pulled after just coming out. But anyway, there's not much to say here because although it is cool to see Zampella you know, speak on Titanfall 3 and address the game and say, hey, I love that game, I'd love to see it come back, Basically, I mean, this is the thing is people who are close to Titanfall have spoken frequently and extensively enough that I think it's pretty easy to infer the situation. Not that we even needed these guys to speak on it to really infer the situation because, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. But 
Listen, man, obviously the guys that respawn that created Titanfall love Titanfall. There's a big there's a big burning pit of passion there for that franchise. And then all of us who have any remote taste in gaming know that Titanfall 1 and 2 were the shit. You guys know, you know, I, I, I'm back on my Call of Duty shit that I haven't really cared about since ninth grade. For some reason, the past few years, I'm all into Call of Duty again for some reason. Cold War, or Black Ops Cold War and Modern Warfare 2 and all this stuff, it's clicking with me. I like it a lot. But I'm not going to lie to you. The best Call of Duty game I ever played was called Titanfall. And if they brought Titanfall 3, like if we got Titanfall 3 tomorrow, I'd say bye-bye Call of Duty because Titanfall 3 is is just simply good. I wouldn't say bye to Black Ops because I do want those zombies. But I'd mostly say bye to Call of Duty, particularly the multiplayer, because god damn, Titanfall is just just good shit. It's, it's the best shit. Titanfall is the best shit. Let's be honest about what kind of shit it is. And... um. So it's clear as day, right? The people that that spawned this game, the people that created this game, clearly love Titanfall and clearly would love to see it continue in return. But at the end of the day, the economic reality just isn't there. I understand we all go back to the whole, but in 2016, EA shot themselves in the foot by releasing Battlefield 1 and Titanfall 2 basically within mere moments of Call of Duty uh, Infinite Warfare. So they kind of set Titanfall 2 out to die by sandwiching it in front of a bunch of, you know, it, it, just in the middle of a bunch of games that are, you know, already more pre established and, and highly uh, history, long, you know, more history to uh, FPS games that are going to just garner more attention. The way to do Titanfall 2 right would have been to release it like in the springtime when there isn't a new Call of Duty or Battlefield to play, you know? But we, we all know the story. EA fucked Titanfall 2. They fucked it. They sent it out to die. But at the end of the day, they are a business, and they do have to think about this. Is it worth it to make a Titanfall 3? Is it in their best interest financially? Because what they got Zampella doing by basically overseeing all the shit at EA these days, the guy's stretched so thin, it looks like, they got him kind of being the godfather of, of Battlefield these days. And Battlefield sells way better than Titanfall. And they don't have to make a Titanfall 3 to test that theory. They just know for a fact Battlefield does better than Titanfall. It is a stronger, better selling brand for the publisher. On a personal level, of course, Titanfall is way better than Battlefield, although they're not entirely com comparable. But Titanfall is way preferable to Battlefield, in my opinion. But that's not what matters here. It's not what matters what we think. What matters is what the numbers say. The numbers say Battlefield sells better, has more cachet. It's a historyed and storied brand that people love and will go nuts for. Let's do Battlefield. Apex Legends is was this attempt, you know, to be like, hey, let's try our hand at this Battle Royale fad and see what we can get out of it. And they ended up making one of the most popular Battle Royale games on the market. And so, unfortunately, we've gotten to the point where Apex Legends is the brand and Titanfall is the... It, it's no longer Apex Legends takes place in the Titanfall universe. It is Titanfall takes place in the Apex Legends universe. Because Apex Legends is the IP at this point. And we just have to accept that. Clearly, there are people internally who would champion a Titanfall 3 and love to see it happen. Clearly, we would all love to see a Titanfall 3 happen because we have great taste and we have huge brains and we're awesome, right? But at the end of the day, Titanfall 3 isn't going to happen because the economic reality just tells us it's not going to sell. Or you're better off investing more in Apex Legends or making another Battlefield game or maybe trying something entirely new that will capture an audience the first go around instead of you know hopefully get it right titanfall 1 did pretty well considering it was on xbox and pc only it did pretty well titanfall 2 could have done phenomenally well because it was also on ps4 they fucked it up we get it but um yeah i mean i, I think the best option for titanfall at this point is going to be to try that trick where you just fuck off for 10 15 years and then you come back to where it's nostalgic and then like you know the 20 you know let, let's say titanfall they try to do a titanfall reboot or remake or titanfall 3 or something and it comes out in the year 2027 you know that's how you do it because at that point all of us were so old and nostalgic we'll buy it no matter what and then there's this whole new generation of gamers that definitely were not around for titanfall 1 and 2 that will just try to retroactively pretend to be nostalgic the way you know kids who are like 17 are super nostalgic for fucking Star Wars and Ghostbusters, even though they were born in 2004, you know, that kind of shit where it's just like that, that's the trick. I think I think we I think Hollywood with their just brain dead, just soulless, cash grabby, nostalgia, money grubbing bullshit has taught us the, the trends and the patterns well enough that we know we know how to do this. You don't make Titanfall three after Titanfall two bombs because, you know, Titanfall three is not going to sell well. 
So what you do is you wait for there to be just just generations of internet outrage that we never got a Titanfall 3, where 70% of that outrage is just people who never actually even played Titanfall, who just want to feel like they're a part of the conversation. And then you're like, wow, look at this huge player base, you know, this huge fan base we've accumulated, we've amassed by simply not giving the people what they want. And then... And then that's when that's when you drop it. That's when you and, and you don't give them Titanfall three up front because that's a bad idea. That takes too much development time. No, you just remaster the one you already have. You sell it for seventy dollars, and the market tells you we want this, and they buy it in mass. And then you make you make buku bucks, baby. That's how that's how you do it, baby. All right, EA. There's my resume. It's uh, you see, I, they, I I served sushi for a couple of years, and I said the thing about Titanfall. You can hire me. I'll start, you know, with a low, modest six-figure salary. Please and thank you. That's it, baby. Bye, Xbox. All right. That's it for Titanfall. I, I, I you know, I, I wish, I wish it was like, oh, Vince Ampel is teasing Titanfall three. It might be happening, but I really don't think it's happening. I don't think we're getting more Titanfall, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope, I hope this this little conversation ages like shit. You know, I hope for some reason at Xbox's event on June 11th, they're just like, remember how Titanfall was an Xbox exclusive? Well, fuck you. Here's Titanfall 3. Dude, that's, dude, that, oh my God, that's what Xbox, if Call of Duty, if you don't get Call of Duty Xbox, that's what you should do. I just came up with this brain blast, Jimmy Neutron style. This is how you do it, okay? The Activision deal doesn't happen. Boo-hoo, you can't get your $69 billion over to, over to Jeff Bezos or whatever his name is. Uh, this is what you do, okay? So you don't have Call of Duty. So what you do is you knock on, EA's door and you say we want hey remember that time you did Titanfall and it was only on Xbox and they go yeah it was a disaster and you go fuck you here's 69 billion dollars um, that we tried to use on Call of Duty uh, but now you get it we want you to make Titanfall 3 it's exclusive for Xbox because this is and obviously it wouldn't be 69 billion dollars I'm just being goofy but you know you throw some money at EA and you say we will fund Titanfall 3 you own the IP you own the developer fine here's the money Make the fucking game, okay? And then you can get 30% of the proceeds of the, of the, of the game, a 30% cut, whatever. Basically, just license out their game, make it a second-party title for Xbox. Boom, there you go. It's basically like getting Call of Duty on Xbox, only it's better, and we get Titanfall 3, and it has the history there because Titanfall 1 was an Xbox exclusive, and everybody's happy, and... Dude, like, yeah, you're welcome. Again, uh, EA, here's my resume. As you can see, I used to bag groceries at Publix when I was 15 years old. I would like a, a modest seven-figure salary. Please and thank you. And that's that's all I'm asking, baby. You're welcome. Titanfall 3, Xbox exclusive. Also, it's, it solves Xbox's problem of not being able to properly manage a game because they're not making it. So there you go. EA will make sure it doesn't suck. All right, cool. That's it for all of our uh, mildly amusing stories or updates of the week. Guys, ready to talk about Redfall? Well, not not just yet. We got to talk about what I've been playing this week and what I've been eating this week. Okay, I can't tell you about Redfall. You can't tell I can't tell you about how I've been Redfalling for you if I haven't told you about what I've been eating. And guys, I just got to tell you one thing. I've been craving a McDonald's McFlurry for a while, and you know how it goes. If you've ever had ice cream at McDonald's, you know the routine. You got to go there with the expectation that the machine is broken and you're not going to get your goddamn ice cream. Uh, thank God McDonald's also has hamburgers and French fries because. Can you imagine if, like, you went to your favorite ice cream place with the expectation that, like, half the time all their ice cream was going to be not available? But anyway, I've been trying to go get a McFlurry at McDonald's for a while. It hasn't been happening. The machine's always down. God hates me. Oh, well. I go to McDonald's. You know, my girlfriend's out of town. I'm feeling low. You know, th times are tough. All that shit. And I'm like, I fuck it. You know, screw the blood pressure. I'm going to go get me a McFlurry. It's going to happen. And the McDonald's right next to me, their ice cream machine was working. So I'm like, hell yeah, looks like I'm getting a McFlurry today. So I get my M&M &M McFlurry because I'm not a heathen who uses, uh, who, who gets the Oreo kind. And well, what do you know? I guess their machine is broken, but they're hell bent on giving me the McFlurry anyway or something. Because you know how McFlurries have that really cool but weird plastic straw where it's like a blocky, it's like a blocky square thing on the top. And then it, like on the bottom, it's a spoon. And then they, they mix in all the M&Ms or Oreos into the McFlurry and then they put some on top. This was just a cup of ice cream with a fuck ton of M&Ms on top. Zero M&Ms mixed into the ice cream. Just so many M&Ms on top, nothing else. And then a regular plastic spoon. I'm talking about the kind of fucking plastic spoon they would give you if you got 
if you got fucking takeout food and you asked for cutlery, you know, if you went to your local Indian restaurant and you asked for some forks and knives, you know, plastic forks and knives to be thrown in the bag or whatever. This is that kind of plastic spoon. They gave me a generic black store brand, whatever fucking like plastic spoon. And, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, I got to, I got to stir the thing myself. I don't get the weird patented iconic McDonald's McFlurry straw and of course as the story goes I don't know this to be true but I think the reason why the straw is square in the back and has that opening is because the way they do it is they they stick the straw into the machine and then and then the straw acts as like a stirring stick to mix the toppings into the ice cream and then you pull it out when you're done with the machine and then it doubles as your spoon it's an efficiency thing which is by the way side note it's so fucking cool that that's how that works but um, I guess they ran out of spoons and they or they didn't feel like mixing it or something happened. But it's just the fact that I got my McFlurry. It tasted right. It was in the appropriate cup. But the str- they didn't give me the right spoon thing. They gave me the wrong spoon. And I had to mix in the M&Ms myself. It ruined the magic. I'll be honest. It totally ruined the magic. Absolutely. 100%. You know? It's like, I don't know, it's like fucking playing Halo. And yeah, the game's, it's like, I'm playing Halo 3. It's it's really, really good. But someone put on a mod that makes Microsoft look like fucking Jeffrey Epstein. And it's, you know, it's aesthetically, it's kind of killing the mood for me. It's a great game, but why do I look like this fucking pedophile? So it's just one of those things, right? And that's been my, it's been something that's bothering me because I don't even know how to complain about it. It's like the McFlurry tasted good. It was a McFlurry. It hit the spot. But if I'm not getting that crazy, weird, blocky, stir-stick straw, uh, I keep calling it a straw, but it's actually a spoon, and you're not going to mix in my toppings for me like the machine is supposed to do as advertised, then i almost rather you just say the ice cream machine is broken because I feel like I got the McFlurry I'd been craving under false pretenses. So that's what that's it for what I've been eating. Did it taste good? Yes. Do I regret it? No. But was I robbed of the appropriate experience? I'll let you be the judge of that. All right, that's it for what I've been eating. Guys, let's talk about what I've been playing. And of course, the big one here is Redfall. But as a side note, I've also been playing the hell out of the Division 1. Uh, I guess it was Games of Gold at some point in time, so I have it somewhere. So I just downloaded it, and i got to be honest, I- I'd get into it more if it weren't for the fact that we got to talk about Redfall. But I, I've been, I was sleeping on this game. Division is pretty fucking cool. I don't think it's, like, groundbreaking, better than Destiny. This is the fucking shared world shooter game for me. But it is definitely something I would have liked to have played sooner and gotten more enjoyment out of if I played it back in its prime. But I am very glad I'm finally giving this game a try because The Division is some good shit. Some fun-ass third-person cover-based shooting and the the way that missions just kind of naturally, you know, you just wander the world and you're just kind of naturally enveloped in the in the next mission or objective and I don't know. It's just like a seamless, fun game. It it's kind of makes it so addicting that like barrier to enter the next objective, the next mission, the next thing to do. It's just so smooth and seamless and transitioned so well that it's just one of those games where it's like put on a podcast, turn on the division, just burn four hours. Don't even don't even think about it. Just burn four hours of your life away. And so yeah, I'm probably about six hours into the division right now, and I'm loving it. It's a really good game, and I cannot wait to get back to it. But Honestly, I did put the game down the second Redfall came out on Tuesday, so I haven't played the past couple days. But needless to say, uh, you know, I've been fucking jumping ship on games like crazy right now. I'm playing Minecraft Legends. I'm playing uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. I'm playing Splinter Cell on the OG Xbox. I'm playing everything and anything. But now I'm in the Division, and I'm like, no, nah, I want to play, play the Division. I don't want to quit on this. I want to play the Division. And then I want to play Division 2. But I got to stop because, and we'll talk about that more next week, I I suppose, because we got to stop because everything, you know, if we did this show on Monday before Starfield or Redfall came out, I'd have a lot more to say about Division. But my head is not even in that space because since, well, I guess Monday night at 8 p.m., I've been playing Redfall a lot. Well, as much as I can, considering I get home from work at five o'clock and then by the time I'm done with like dinner and adult responsibilities it's like fucking time for bed but i i you know in the two nights since the game's come out i've managed to squeeze in about four hours of play time and i gotta say redfall and this is it we're in the news let's take a break transition me to the news boop boop beep beep let's talk about redfall so yeah after a year's worth of a delay after a couple of years anticipating this game uh from an esteemed developer arcane 
you know, Bethesda's bread, you know, not bread and butter by no means, but, uh, you know, their, their critical darling studio, Arcane. I gotta be honest, I, li- I like this game. <laughs> I like Redfall. It's, it's pretty fun. Uh, there's, listen, I understand the game, no doubt, released in an inexcusable state. And a couple weeks ago, I almost like over the top, I'd say, just bitched and moaned about it's releasing at 30 FPS. Oh, my God. This is ridiculous. Delay this game. I'm not playing this game at 30 FPS. Fuck this. This is wrong. Um, Side note, I stuck to my guns. I'm playing the game on PC. So fuck you. It's 60 FPS. I'm on PC. I'm not playing it on Xbox. But um, no, I got to be honest, man. This game absolutely released in an inexcusable state. There are tons of graphical glitches, just bugs. Game looks like shit. Uh, I saw someone say the game looks like it was an Xbox One launch era game. And you know what? If you told me this game came out in 2014, I'd believe it. It doesn't look impressive at all. But above all those things, the core game, what we have here, the nugget of, of the gameplay loop, the core of what this game is all about, I think is pretty fucking good. <laughs> I like this game, and again, you know, keep in mind, this is coming from the guy that tried to tell you, stop listening to your favorite YouTuber and podcast all the time, and try to formulate some opinions for yourself, not to say that people listening to this podcast have a problem with that, but just to say, the internet at large, I do think suffers from this inability sometimes to think for themselves. I'm not trying to be a hipster and hate games people love and love games people hate, I just experience the games that I have an interest in and I, and, and I, and I just, you know, I drive with the things I drive with and I don't click with the things I don't click with. So Redfall is cool. Here are all the things Redfall gets right. Redfall has a God tier setting. I'm going to say, it. first of all, I don't like my open world games to be so massive. You lose yourself in it. That stuff stresses me the fuck out. So Redfall, it has a little bit of a smaller map for an open world game. That's a plus. It's aesthetic is so fucking cozy. There are people, you know, I, I know this is a thing. I know this is a thing. We're getting to the generation where th- the amount of fandom for Halloween is starting to almost match, if not one day, maybe even rival, you know, really start to rival that love some people have for Christmas, where like the Christmas season is their aesthetic and identity. I, I'm one of those people with Halloween. I, the only reason my home doesn't constantly look like it's Halloween 24 seven is because I just want it to feel that much more extra special when September rolls around. And it is appropriate to decorate for the holiday, but I am without a doubt, absolutely a Halloween nut it is my favorite holiday by a long shot. The, just the, the fall leaves, the aesthetic. Uh, I'm, I don't even particularly like scary movies or anything, but just the, 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 the imagery, the iconic, imagery of of the Halloween season, the festivities, the feeling in the air, everything about the holiday, 100% is just my favorite, most happy thing in the world. Um, Take literally any place in the world, make it Halloween season overlay, and it's infinitely better. And Redfall captures the cozy, warm, happy feeling that I get with Halloween so well, which Kind of frustrates me so much more because Kronky and I were playing it on co-op last night and we agreed. It's like how this game is such a God tier, perfect Halloween game. What motherfucker at Xbox, at Bethesda, whoever, you know, made the call wasn't like, bitch, we need to delay this game till October 31st or sometime in October because this is too perfect for Halloween. And God knows this game needs some more work. It needs it needs polish. It def- the game definitely needs more polish, a lot more. And I see people saying this game needs a lot more than a couple months of polish. You know, the game's barren. There are no enemies to fight. To those people, you know, to each their own. If that's a problem for you, it's a problem for you. But I don't think the game's problem is that it's barren with nothing to do. It feels like you are in, like, some fucking Salem, Massachusetts, forever Halloween town. And it feels destroyed and abandoned and decrepit because fucking vampires are killing everyone. And so, yeah, it's not left for dead where there's just a fucking massive horde of zombies in front of your face 24 seven. No, the enemy encounters are a lot more deliberate in this game. You can sometimes walk around and do some serious exploring without coming into contact with another enemy at all. And then you go into a building and you search around, oops, there's a vampire and a couple enemies and other things, you know? So I actually really love that because it really, this game has a good sense of exploration and just, I just enjoy walking around the world and feeling the environment. And so not constantly being engaged in combat 
And this game allows me to kind of take in the best of both, have that first person action shooter experience I want, while also being able to just take in this really beautiful atmospheric world they've built. And so for that alone, I gotta say, you know, it's one of those things. Is Redfall the tightest shooting I've ever felt? No. Is Redfall the most visually beautiful game I've ever played? No. Does it have the level of polish that a first party game should have? Absolutely not. But does it nail a a core setting and kind of gameplay system that grabs me and pulls me in and makes me want to just experience more and more of it? Yeah, absolutely. I think at its core, Redfall is a pretty damn good game. And honestly, if they had delayed this game for six months and just really polished the fuck out of it, I feel like we could get it from it's sitting at like a 63% or something like that kind of Metacritic score. I think this game could be easily a high seven, maybe even a low eight if it just had a shit ton of polish. Because I'll, I'll be honest, while there are some game critics out there who have some very, very valid criticism on this game, I just tend to disagree with a lot of the discourse because this is the trend we see. It just happens so often on the internet. It's like, uh-oh, this notable game critic or gaming outlet gave this game a bad review. The game must be complete dog shit and everything about it is shit and it's completely irredeemable and we cannot give it credit where credit's due for any single aspect of the game. Literally everything about it must be the worst. And it, it makes me so sad because, well, one, it shows people's dogmatic nature and inability to think critically uh and two it also just shows that like we just we just don't we don't know how to separate bad i you know bad features or bad characteristics in a game from the the good stuff because for every piece of shit out there there's good qualities to it and for everything that fucking rocks there are shitty qualities to it you know it's just one of those things and it, it just drives me nuts that the conversation can't just be more like yeah, Redfall is rough around the edges. It is inexcusable that Bethesda and Xbox allowed this game to launch in the state it launched in. Valid. Completely valid. But then for people to be like, the game is irredeemable garbage. The game sucks. It's it's just a complete joke. I can't believe I can't believe Arcane made this. It's like, well, now, now, now. This is a really cool game that just needed some more time in the oven. This isn't like a dog shit irredeemable game that is just a dog shit irredeemable game. Like that's just, let's be honest about what we're, what we're dealing with. I saw people saying like the shooting in the game sucks. The aim sucks. It's like, bro, I don't know, man. I'm again, I'm not playing to be fair. I'm not playing on Xbox. So I'm running into a lot fewer problems. My, my frame rate is mostly good. There are occasional hitches and hiccups and definitely like just like weird animation glitches and stuff. But for the most part, the feel, the, the gameplay of the game has felt pretty solid on PC um, like I, I definitely do not feel at all like, like this game is just unplayably broken and shitty. Uh, again, I do think for a triple a first party game, it's inexcusable the performance, but for a double a kind of just like weekend knockoff fun game it plays pretty fine to me. I don't know. I just, I feel like everyone expects every game to feel as finely tuned and precise as like halo or something, but not every game is going to feel that that polish in terms of its core gameplay. And Redfall to me feels mostly appropriate the way it handles. Like, don't don't hate me for it. But yeah, again, I I, I don't want to be like super. I, I'm not just trying to be like oppositional just for the sake of you know defending my favorite corporate overlord. Like, let's be honest. Redfall absolutely should have been delayed. The lack of 60 FPS on Xbox is insanely unacceptable. Um, the the graphical performance the um, frame rate performance, just the everything, the stuttering, the loading, everything about the game, just completely unacceptable in this game. I, I completely agree with those complaints. I wish this game had been delayed because I think what, what's here is actually a really fun, a really special game. And I think people would really enjoy it if uh, twofold, uh, if they had given it an appropriate delay to get it done right. And if uh, I guess all the favorite commentators on the internet told you um, it's actually good and you're stupid and just gaslit you into liking it because then a lot of people and, and let me just be very clear because I am I'm being extremely harsh when I make these comments. I am not calling out people who listen to this podcast. Um, I, I have it's not been my experience that people that listen and comment on Xbox on are a bunch of just all all eat up whatever fucking I don't know Skillup says on YouTube and just take his word as scripture. That's not what I'm saying, but it, it is it's discouraging when you can't you can't scroll through Twitter or Reddit or just look for you know people's impressions on the game and just hear you know that you know that people don't have original and unique opinions when it's just you're hearing the same exact takes in similarly worded ways regurgitated endlessly. It's like, at some point, it's like, I can even tell that 
this isn't your idea or your your thought or opinion because you're even saying it similarly to the way other people are saying it. It's just like you're not – there's just a lack of, of real critical thinking here. And this goes both ways because I also think games are commonly way – overpraised when they're good right because oh my god dude i played star like I, I haven't played star wars jedi survivor yet uh but it's because i played jedi fallen order the game is really well done i'm really impressed that that respawn were able to make a third person action star wars game despite their exclusively first person shooter heritage and that game is pretty damn good for what it is but people walk around talking like star wars jedi fallen order is like the fucking the fucking piece de resistance like it's the like it's like it's the halo 3 or the last of us of star wars games let's be honest star wars jedi fallen order is just a surprisingly solid game like it's not that good so it works both ways where like a game is good and then people give it way too much credit but in this case we're saying it's where a game is not that good and it's being shit on i think a bit too harshly I don't mind you being mad at Bethesda and Xbox for greenlighting this release date and letting it follow through to the end and allowing this game to hit market in this condition. Xbox and Bethesda need to be held accountable for that because they fucked up and they did us dirty as consumers. But I don't want to give Arcane as a developer too much shit for the way this game turned out because I think they're onto something really, really good. And I'm sure if you ask the people who made this game happen, uh, hey, would you have liked a delay to have continued to polish and make this game even better? They would have said, oh, God, yes. We know it's not in an acceptable state. We don't want our game, our hard work, our years of hard work being presented to the public in this way. We, we're not happy with it. You know, if there's anyone who's insanely heartbroken or, or just or just, you know, dissatisfied with the way this game has been presented to the world and released to the world... I'm sure it's the people who made the game. So I just want to just be easy on, on, the, on the team at Arcane Austin because, you know, they made Prey. And that's not considered a slouch of a game. And they are they are a secondary team of the guys that made Dishonored and Deathloop. And those games are not considered slouches, you know, by any means. And I understand for some people, uh, that's kind of where the heartburn lies is they're like, yeah, how is it that the people that brought us games like Prey and Dishonored, how did they fuck this up? I get it, and that kind of makes it worse because you expect nothing but the best from these guys, and this is what you got. But that that falls at the hands of the publishers, not the developers. And again, there are, there's a lot of reporting on how, you know, following the following Dishonored 2's kind of just lack of commercial success, uh, there was some pressure from Bethesda to be like, okay, maybe you guys need to lean in and do some multiplayer work, and that's how. Arcane ended up kind of being put on support work with um, with Machine Games back a few years ago to do that Wolfenstein, the New Order, all female cast, whatever uh, spinoff game they made, and then you know kind of how we ended up getting like Deathloop and Redfall was basically a response from the publisher Bethesda saying we need you to try to do something that has a little more mainstream appeal. Why don't you try something multiplayer? Why don't you try something co competitive or co op or you know something that sticks? And so I know a lot of people look at that and they're like, well, this was Arcane being forced to do a co-op games as a service type thing it's like but that's not really what redfall is like yeah it is co-op and maybe that was pushed onto them was the multiplayer angle but this game doesn't feel like a games as a service or anything like that like you know arcane kept saying leading up to the game's launch please don't think of this like left for dead it's a, it's more like far cry um having pumped four hours into the game i'll say it's it's both it feels like it feels totally and aesthetically like left for dead um, but yeah, it's gameplay is a little bit more like Far Cry, but it also feels a little bit like Arcane. It has that ability to approach, you, you know, your missions and kind of any structure you want to do. You can play a little more stealthy. You can do a little more sniping and sneaking around quarters, or you can be like me and just bump the difficulty down and be a fucking guns a blazing moron. Uh, you can play the game however you want. And it really does have a little bit of that Arcane flavor with a little bit of that Far Cry formula and a little bit of that left for dead vibe and i understand they weren't trying to make left for dead they made that deliberately clear for a long time leading up to this game's release but i gotta be honest redfall is is scratching that uh is scratching that left for dead itch for me a lot more than back for blood because on top of the fact that left for dead was such an insanely fun game it's just so endlessly perfect it's just such a pure joyful game to play the thing that makes Left 4 Dead is is its setting. Is it's it's just environmental storytelling. It's just it is a cozy, warm game to play. Both I, I say Left 4 Dead one more than two, but both of them they both have it for sure. Redfall has that. Redfall has that. It's not trying to be like 
a, a creepy gothic horror setting just for the sake of, oh, it's vampires. No, it's like it genuinely understands the assignment of trying to make this kind of vampire fall Massachusetts small town taken over by monsters kind of look and, and just and just leaning into the tropes, the tropes of the season of the horror uh, kind of look and feel and just really just uh, absolutely nailing it. You know, I, I don't know. I, to me, this game captures some of those really hard to nail elements so well that I got to give the game credit because those are really, really challenging things to nail. You know, I have no doubt that with an extra six to 12 months, they could have made this game objectively top to bottom, well-rounded of really, really great experience. But unfortunately, they were pushed out the door way too early. And what we got, while definitely far from perfect, definitely inexcusable in the state it's been launched in, nails some fundamental things that most games, even in a completely finished state, wouldn't be able to nail. And that's kind of what I really love about Far... Uh, I almost said Far Cry. Redfall. Um, so I'm going to continue to play the fuck out of this game. And, I'm, and I'll play it on Xbox whenever they do that 60 FPS patch. And I hope, you know, I hope they're able to turn around with this game. I, I hate this, this, this cycle we've run into where it's like... Release the game broken, ask for forgiveness, update the game until the point where fans are like, you know, I kind of forgot about the bad times. The game's in a really good state today. You know, the Fallout 76 method. I hate that. I don't I don't wish for that to perpetuate. I don't mean to perpetuate it by playing this game and speaking really well of it. But, you know, it's one of those things. You're screwed no matter what you do, man. You can not buy the game and hurt the developers and speak with your wallet and say, I don't want an unfinished game, or you can play the game and support the developers and play the game that you think looks good regardless of the fact that apparently it's not in really good shape, and then send the message to the publisher that it's okay to release games in the state. But no matter what you do, I I always encourage, you know, I would always encourage people to do what they think is the best thing to do, not even necessarily vote with their wallet, but just to do what, you know, whatever it is on their heart that tells them is the right thing to do, do that. I would, I would never encourage someone to do otherwise, but you know, you can't win. If you're trying to do something for a specific reason, you you can't, you can't fucking win. So I hate that this is where we are in gaming that, you know, Xbox and Bethesda fucking knew the game was not in ready, ready to go shape, push out the door anyway. And now here we are. It sucks. It deeply sucks because I really think this is a game that would get a lot more positive reaction and a lot more, um, a lot more praise had it just not had these unnecessary, rough edges that it definitely has and you know it's funny because i was telling Kronk when we were playing the other day it's so funny that the last thing arcane made and i know they're two different teams but still arcane the last game put out with the with the developer name arcane on it before microsoft bought bethesda or you know around you know unaffected by the acquisition from microsoft i should say was uh was death loop you know it was a playstation exclusive game from arcane and it came out and it got Perfect scores, Game of the Year awards. That's a game that's overrated. Redfall or uh, Deathloop, good game, cool game. You know, I haven't played too much of it. I only played like two and a half hours of it, maybe, but it's a good game. It's fun. It's good. But fucking 10 out of 10, Game of the Year. Please, please. I hardly think Deathloop is fucking stop what you're doing. This is the crown, this, you know, this is the king of all games kind of game. It's not. So. The last thing they ever did before they were an Xbox first party kind of studio was make an exclusive game for PlayStation that was literally in every sense literally of the uh, of the word overrated <laughs> where you know it's it's a solid 8 and a half out of 10 or something like that and it got like 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 and then the the very next game that came out with the arcane branding on it was their very first game as a team owned by Xbox, as an Xbox first party studio making an Xbox exclusive game. And this game is quite literally the opposite of 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 Deathloop, where Alright, it's getting it's getting shit on and deservedly so. The game is rough around the edges and released in an un unacceptable state, but I don't know about a four out of ten, dude. And you I played I you know, I haven't played the game through to completion. I haven't seen all that it has to offer, but four hours is more than enough for me to go, this is not a four out of ten. This game like you can convince me that Redfall is a six out of ten. You can convince me. I, I would say it is it is an eight or a nine out of ten that is just that is held down two or three points because they 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 push out the door unfinished. Yeah. I could see that. I personally would say, you know, this game this game has the trappings of an eight or a nine, but it's no doubt, you know, in the state it's been pushed out to us in, it's a six. It's a six. 
But there are people saying it's it's a it's a four out of ten. There are people giving it fucking user reviews, review bombing it zero out of ten. Like obviously, I I get it. Like you can't scores mean nothing. People's opinions in that regard mean mean nothing. It's 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 silly to even dwell on it in any in, in any capacity. But it's just so funny to me where it's like it feels like you know Redfall deserves heat, no doubt. But I think it's getting a little more heat than maybe it deserves. You know, Deathloop, a good game, deserves some praise, no doubt. But I think it's getting just a little bit more praise than it deserves. And I don't like to perpetuate the console war bullshit, but, you know, I, I don't think it is because uh, the media is biased and they just like PlayStation, they just hate Xbox. I really don't think that that's what it is. I think I think it is um, everyone loves Nintendo because we all grew up on Nintendo. So there's always a special favoritism that Nintendo games get. You know, Nintendo's really good at releasing 7 or 8 out of 10s that get 9s and 10s because we all have a soft spot for Nintendo. Fucking look at, God, Pokemon, oh my God. Um, However, PlayStation, I think, gets that second-in-command favoritism where it's like, a lot of people did grow up with PlayStation because the brand's old enough now that there are enough people who are like, yeah, I grew up as a kid playing PlayStation. And also, I think think PlayStation is most people's default like other thing, you know, it's like, of course, we all love Nintendo, but when I'm playing my serious, modern, whatever, hyper-realistic games, PlayStation, and so PlayStation gets a little bit of that favoritism, because it's like, it's the place where a lot of people, it just makes sense for a lot of people to play, and that's no shade, PlayStation's earned a lot of the rewards, you know, the player base they've worked hard to earn, and they have a great platform with great games, and that's all well and good, but I feel like Xbox does get the shaft sometimes, where it's it's the least played on platform, it's the one that's the youngest, and it has the least amount of nostalgia, although it's definitely old enough that it has some serious nostalgia at this point. Um, you know, it's just, it's just the brand that people have the least amount of affinity towards, so I feel like this is maybe just a little bit of a microcosm of that whole, like, sometimes Xbox gets judged a little too harshly, and PlayStation gets favored a little too fondly, but, in, you know, I feel almost silly even pointing that out because although I do think that sometimes happens and that maybe a little bit of that is at play here, at the end of the day, Microsoft and Bethesda fucked up. They royally fucked up. They need to be held accountable for what they did. So, you know, this is my other mind talking, uh, you know, in stark contrast to what I just said. But, you know, it's I saw Jez Corden tweeting about it. I think he put an article up on probably on Windows Central about it, which I would encourage you to look at if, you know. Always, always put out some good, some good ideas, some good thoughts. Whether you agree with them or not, Jez Corden, always a, a strong voice in the Xbox community. But he was talking about how, like, hey, hey, keep in mind, remember, Redfall, you know, it's launched as an Xbox exclusive, but that game was greenlit and half developed at a time where Bethesda was independent and did not was not owned by Microsoft. So the the green lighting, the directing, the production of Redfall was almost entirely Bethesda. So let's, you know, this is a lot more Bethesda doing the Fallout 76 thing again than it is Xbox pushing a game out the door unready. The only thing is, while I agree with that, and I do think it's important to note because this is this is the last game we're going to get from Arcane that wasn't stem to stern developed under the ownership of Xbox. Um, Xbox still, at the end of the day, owns Bethesda and controls all this. And you would assume, you know, Matt Booty and, 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 and Aaron Greenberg and all these these leadership guys, they kind of oversee Bethesda. I know Bethesda gets to kind of operate independently of Xbox in a way. You know, they call it the Xbox and Bethesda Showcase. They don't call it the Xbox Showcase and it has Bethesda games in it, you know. So they, they, they let the brands operate and exist independently of one another. So it's one of those things where I get it. I, I understand that this isn't necessarily all on Xbox Um, that there's a little, you know, maybe if if this was a Forza game that came out the gate this way, or we're talking about Halo or something like that, it's a little more on Xbox because that's always been them. But the, these various Bethesda properties haven't been under the leadership of Xbox long enough for us to really go. Redfall is fundamentally what it is because of Xbox. That's not entirely true. However, as the owner of Bethesda and the one controlling the curation list on Game Pass, which probably had everything to do with this game's release date and et cetera, et cetera, yeah, that, that falls on Xbox. So, you know, you can't tell me that Xbox didn't have the final say at the end of the day going, you know, you, I, let me say it this way. You can't tell me that at the end of the day, Xbox couldn't have gone to Bethesda and said, no, 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 no. This game is not ready. We are not releasing it. I find it hard to believe Xbox doesn't have the authority and the power to do that. And so 
in a strange way, even though, yes, Bethesda greenlit this game. Yes, Bethesda led the production of this game as the publisher and everything. Still, the buck stops with Xbox because they are the owner. Because look at what happened with uh, Psychonauts 2, right? The game was crowd uh, crowdfunded, and it could have come out a couple years sooner, but Xbox bought Double Fine, the developer, and said, here's a fuck ton of money. Here's some additional development time. Why don't you go fuck off and make Psychonauts 2 even better? And that's exactly what they did. And Psychonauts 2 went from being a game that probably would have been pretty good to a game that was very, very, very satisfying. A very satisfying sequel to a game that people have been longing for more of for 20 years. Psychonauts 2 is the textbook definition of how you fucking get it done. Microsoft bought that game when it was more than halfway through development, pumped a bunch of money, gave some extra time, and said... Do what you got to do, but make it right. And that's why Psychonauts 2 rocks. So I don't see why the same couldn't be done here, where Xbox swooped in, bought Bethesda, and said, Redfall looks pretty promising. Here's a bunch more time. Just get it right. Don't worry about the cost. Don't worry about Just get it right. And then Redfall could release in a fully completed state. So it does stop with Xbox, even though I understand a lot of what Redfall fundamentally is, does in some way fall on the shoulder of Bethesda. So I guess what I'm trying to say is all parties are to blame, but let's just try to be, let's just try to somehow kind of make sense of where the blame should be tossed around and at, 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 to what extent is it this party versus this party's, you know, kind of uh, wrongdoing, but... Nonetheless, man, I mean, that Xbox, Bethesda's you, people know that now, Bethesda means Xbox, it was a great acquisition for you. It was a really good get. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> don't, don't, don't fuck it up. Don't let your games come out like this, man. Arcane's never put out a bad game. Everybody loves Dishonored. Dishonored 2. Prey. Deathloop. Why would you let Redfall come out like this, man? It's a terrible look. There's a lot riding on Redfall, or was, because everyone was looking at it, regardless of what happened behind the scenes, everyone was looking at it as, this is the first Xbox first-party game coming from a Bethesda team. Even though the game was greenlit and mostly made without your oversight, that is how this game was viewed. So you have, you know, it would behoove you, you know, maybe to want to oversee the project and make sure it's becoming the best thing it can be for this, for the protection of your brand, for the, you know, for the ability to push your fucking console that's down 30% on sales right now, you know, it would probably be a good thing for you to maybe get Redfall right. And I, I feel like it just comes down to the Game Pass release schedule, right? Like, well, Starfield's in September, and then Forza will probably be in November. It's uh, There's no... Redfall's got to be now. It's just got to be now. It just has to happen. They need to feed the machine. This is what happens when you have a subscription service. You need to feed the machine. People are subscribed. They need content. When the game costs $70 and it's the only way to get the game, you got to get the game right. Because no one's going to put down 70 bucks if the quality of the game isn't there. But when people are already subscribed to the service and the game is, eh, it's good, definitely rough around the edges, but, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a good core here. It just needs some refinement. You can pass that off to your subscribers because they're already paying you. You just need to give them more shit to consume. Doesn't matter if it's perfectly done, immaculately done. Just make sure you get some content out to them so they can keep eating and subscribing. And that is the... I don't like to think that's how Microsoft is viewing Game Pass and running Game Pass, but decisions like this they they you know it it doesn't disprove that theory you know not necessarily so you know and then of course naturally this conversation always ends in the same place now we look all eyes on starfield you know and it's this another one of these games it was it was greenlit and in in, in, in its inception was at a time long before microsoft owned bethesda and a lot of the game was developed, and a lot of the game was what it is today, long before Xbox came away and bought Bethesda. But people are going to look at Starfield and say, that's not a Bethesda game, that's an Xbox game. That's an Xbox first-party game. And people are going to judge how good or not good Xbox is as a brand based on how good or not good Starfield is. So you got to get it right. Because Xbox Series X... It's on its third year. It's 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 about to be three years old. And here's what you got. Halo Infinite, you fucked it up. Forza, Forza uh, Horizon 5? Well, those games are always good. Thank your lucky fucking stars you have uh, playground games because they don't fuck up. Knock on wood for Fable. Uh, you got fucking some smaller games like Grounded and Pentiment, but 
You're not moving consoles with that. That's all well and good, and the and the community loves it. But you're not moving consoles because even Hi-Fi Rush, my beloved Hi-Fi Rush, you're not fucking moving consoles with Hi-Fi Rush. You're building goodwill, no doubt. That's important. You're you're feeding the machine with Game Pass. You're giving us Xbox fans who are already here something to care about. But you're not pushing more consoles off of store shelves with those games. So don't even think about those games because they don't they don't fucking count in terms of trying to fucking push the brand, sell the box, get into people's homes, boost subscriber counts, and make Xbox a serious contender. You know, when it comes into the the, the ring, when they when they're going head to head with PlayStation, make them a serious contender. Because you fucked up Halo, Forza Horizon, yeah, it's just another really great Forza Horizon game, but people aren't buying their fucking console for the racing game. That's that's more of a niche thing. The, the racing market is going to do what they're going to do. You got to keep making Forza. Obviously, it's a money maker for you, but that's not that's not the thing that's going to get people to jump ship from PlayStation or run out to Walmart and purchase a Series S, okay? And now you fucked up Redfall. And we're almost three years in, and you still don't have a killer app for this new console. And listen, I don't think PlayStation 5 is off to the hottest start either. We don't know what the fuck is happening on PlayStation. They refuse to even talk about if they have a single game in development anymore. We don't know. But they put out a new Horizon, and people loved it. And they put out a new God of War, and people fucking loved it. And they're about to put out another Spider-Man game, and I would be so shocked if people don't love it. And so, I don't know. I mean, these consoles are about the same exact age. They've been on the market for about the same amount of time. One of them is outselling the console that it that came before it. And the other one just dropped 30% in its quarterly sales on hardware. Maybe, just maybe, high quality, highly published, ready for market games are pushing people towards your platform and haphazardly, poorly managed, really good core games that have no fucking backbone leadership or fleshed out, you know, content roadmap are killing at least your reputation. And I wouldn't be surprised if the reason console sales are down on Xbox is because why the fuck would anyone want to buy the box that had a broken Halo game in 2021, zero games in 2022, and a broken Redfall thing in 2023. That's where you're at right now. So I love Xbox. I'm going to continue to love my Xbox. I love my Series S. I love my Series X. I I live in a fucking 800 square foot, one bedroom apartment. And I look at my computer desk, I got an Xbox Series S. I turn around and look at my living room, I got an Xbox Series X at the TV. I go into my only other room in my apartment, my bedroom, I got an Xbox One right there next to my TV. I love Xbox. I'm so happy to have my Xboxes. I don't regret any of the Xboxes I've ever bought, even the ones that red ringed on me. I don't give a shit. I love my Xbox. I'm going to continue to enjoy Game Pass, to enjoy your next broken Halo game, your next fucking betrayal of the amazing story you set out with Halo 5 and then completely fucking abandoned. I'm going to continue to enjoy all the shit you do whether it's good or bad, because I love Xbox. And I can usually look through, look past like the shortcomings of Redfall and be like, this is a really good game. You guys just kind of did it dirty. And I'm going to continue to be like, the world is fucking crazy because they didn't appreciate games like Quantum Break when we had them. Because that is that is what it is these days to be on Xbox. It's not like the 360 days anymore. You don't get a bunch of really, really, really good games that everyone just loves. Mass Effect, Bioshock, Halo 3, Gears of War. That, that's gone. That Those days are dead. And clearly they're never coming back because last time I checked, I was like a fucking middle school student when, when that stuff happened. And I mean, now here I am pushing 30, balding, and Xbox hasn't been fun in a long time um, for the general public. And, and it's Xbox's fault. They're fucking it up, dude. So it's disappointing. Again, like, I like this game. <laughs> I like this game a lot. I just, uh, I just can't help but think, you know, man, if this game came out six months from now and wasn't a complete mess. I would love this game. Right now, I really like this game. I really like this game, but I feel insecure saying it because I know there's a lot of things wrong with it. But if this game came out ready to go, I would proudly say I love this game because there's a really, really good game here underneath all the brokenness. I think the shooting is mostly pretty good. I think the enemy encounters are mostly pretty good. The AI, I'll agree, the AI is a little dead, but maybe for someone like me who sucks at games, that's a good thing. I don't know. The, I'm really just loving exploring this game. I think the abilities are cool. I think the weapons are cool. I see people, people complaining about the RPG mechanics. A little bit defense on this game. Listen, a little light RPG mechanics in your open world game is par for the course these days. I don't think it's unheard of. That's like, oh yeah, you swap this gun for this gun because this gun has higher stats. And oh, you leveled up and you got a new skill point. Why don't you invest that in one of your abilities? I don't think that's anything to complain about. I see people complaining about that shit like these half-baked RPG mechanics. Bitch, please. 
They feel right at home in the game. They make perfect sense in the context of the game. It's fine. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's pretty fun. I have no problem with those RPG light mechanics that the game has. I do see people complaining that it's like the the four-player co-op abilities feels kind of useless. Like it's a single-player game. And they split all the abilities into four different characters and force it to be co-op. I don't feel that necessarily, but I also don't... I will say this. Having played one day solo and one day co-op, I will say it does feel like this game wasn't developed with a multiplayer first mentality. And it doesn't feel like multiplayer was shoehorned into it either. It just kind of feels like multiplayer is there, but they, they never really developed the game around the strong suits of multiplayer, if that makes sense. Like, I didn't feel like the game was less fun because I played with Kronky the other night, but I did feel like I would enjoy this game just the same if I played it by myself right now. Uh, which I think, you know, it's, it, that's that's different. When you play Halo on co-op, that's a different experience. I love playing Halo single player because I love just getting invested in the world and kind of like shutting my brain off and just focusing on Halo. But then you play Halo co-op and it's a whole motherfucking different game. It's goofy. You're laughing. Crazy shit's happening. You're in, interacting with the sandbox in entirely different ways. The weapons, the, the vehicles, everything are it completely changed by whether or not you're playing with someone or by yourself. Redfall doesn't have anything like that where I feel like, oh, well, I'm playing it co-op, so the game feels different. I feel like we're able to approach combat differently. I feel like we're able to approach missions differently. It doesn't feel like that. It just feels like there was one of me in the world playing the game, and now there's two of me in the world playing the game, single player or multiplayer, you know? So I will say the the, the multiplayer suite feels a little, a little underwhelming, um, just kind of like it's just kind of there, you know? But again, that's not a huge thing for me because I mostly don't like playing games co-op like Far I don't know if Far Cry is still co-op, but Far Cry used to be co-op. I remember in like the Far Cry 3 and 4 days and stuff, they'd be like, play it co-op. I'm like, no fucking thank you. And that's kind of where I fall with Redfall. I'm like, I picked the girl with the uh, the girl that's in all the ads with the elevator ability so she can jump and the umbrella for shielding. Uh, I picked her because the umbrella, the, uh, the sorry, the elevator telekinetic ability is cool. And uh, so I picked her and... I haven't even bothered playing with any of the other characters, and I really don't care to, I'll be completely honest. I feel fine just pretending like there's only one character in the game anyway and playing it single player. So that is technically a downside because the game is billing itself as a great multiplayer experience. But to talk the game up a little bit as far as its multiplayer, can we just acknowledge that it's kind of cool that this game isn't trying to sell you cosmetics and a season pass, and they're not promising... 20 years of content roadmap updates for years and years to come. It's just a game. You can play a co-op. You can play it by yourself. It is multiplayer centric when you want it that way. Um, and you can just play the game. There's no way to throw at it a bunch of extra money. It just is what it is. It's a game. So shout out to Redfall for being that. I feel like it's not getting praised for that, you know, because every other game that lets you play with even one other person is trying to sell you a fucking Fergalicious tale or some shit on the microtransaction store. So shout out to Redfall for at least just embracing the fact that it's a video game and not trying to nickel and dime you for, uh, for, I don't know, roaming this, the town of Redfall looking like Godzilla or some shit. But, uh, I don't know. I, I guess, um, I guess maybe we should stop there with the, the, the long rant on Redfall. I just, I, I want to just talk about it because, there's so little news happening in Xbox right now, and this is the talk of the town. It's just how Xbox is kind of catastrophically fucked as a result of what happened here with Redfall. I, I, I do think it looks dire for Xbox. You know, Do I think Xbox is going to go under or some shit, or Microsoft's going to fold this division of the company? No, it's making good money. You know, They just had their earnings call. They showed that you know, revenue is up. You know, so it's, it's good. Xbox is making good money for the company and it's doing its job. But I don't know, man. In the context of Xbox being a tendril of the Microsoft Corporation, Xbox is in good shape. Keep up the good work. Keep making people subscribe and buy and play and engage, right? Good job. But as far as being a legitimate player in the games ecosystem, the game sphere, you know, as far as the world of people who are inclined and geared and interested in video games, as far as that goes, where your reputation matters and your console install base matters and the way that the media portrays you and all these things, Xbox is shit in the bed hard. And I think that's part of the confusion is like, it's a tale of two stories. Microsoft looks at Xbox and like, we're making money, good. But we... As, as people who play video games and don't give a shit about the Microsoft Corporation, we just care about gaming. Xbox looks like they're fucking in dire, in a, in a dire situation because they, they just 
they just keep dropping the ball. Everyone left 343. Everyone got fired here. They got rid of the fucking Halo campaign team. Redfall came out the the gate half baked. No reason for that to have been the case, but they did. You know, the only thing I can say silver lining wise is um remember Arcane worked with machine games on that really god awful Wolfenstein Young Blood thing, which was like a co op kind of it was kind of like a prototype for what Redfall would be in a way. Although I hated that game and I like Redfall a lot. Um but it was kind of like a prototype for what this game was. So I feel like in a way that Wolfenstein Young Blood was just kind of arcane getting their feet wet with this kind of genre and that play style to see what they could later do once they built Redfall. And that is what it feels like. So in some ways, I will say this game almost just feels like another example of a team that is not equipped for this type of game being tasked with making this type of game. And if you just put arcane back on doing another really typical arcane style game i think they'll not they'll knock it out of the park again it's not like all doom and gloom for them i just hate that this game clearly could have been more and showed promise and then just wasn't so food for thought i guess let's wrap up this uh redfall conversation with a with a, with a comment sam torres wrote in about redfall and says oh the shit we will catch in two years redfall or red crawl Needs about 10 months more of improvement to make it look like it's not on the Xbox 360. But it will get there. The thing is, it's kind of fun. But 77 gigabyte game? No the hell way. I'd keep that on my Series S over something balls out better. Please, Microsoft, just get on track with something next. Jesse, I'm frustrated. So, yeah, I think Sam is echoing a lot of the common sentiments a lot of us are feeling. I I, I feel more all this as well. It's fair. I, I know Game Pass affords us this luxurious ability to just try a game out you can you don't even have to download it. you can just stream it instantly but you know you want to check out the new game you want to make room on your hard drive on your very limited 500 gigabyte hard drive on your series s for redfall you want to download that almost 100 gigabyte size game so you can see what all the fuss is about what xbox's new uh exclusive title is going to be like and then you get this and it is frustrating because at the end of the day the biggest selling point of game pass is that you get xbox published first party games day and date on game pass your halos your gears of wars your perfect darks your fables your redfalls your starfields these games just come out on game pass day one it's a huge incentive but if you keep fucking up the reputation of your first party output that's not gonna be a selling point for long people are gonna go yeah i could subscribe to game pass and get all the xbox first party content day one but their day one content isn't that great the game's released half-baked or broken or they're not that good or just whatever. I'll just go pay full price for games on PlayStation where I know the games are fully polished and ready for market. And that's, you know, that that is that is a very, very valid mentality that could grow as a result of repeated abuse <laughs> of your own, of your own teams, of your own, of your own video games by doing this stuff. And that's why I'm just, as someone whose opinion doesn't fucking matter and Microsoft's not listening I would urge you, Microsoft, please give a shit about the quality and the state of your games before you put them out there for the world to see. Please. And Starfield, I don't envy you. It fucking sucks to be you. You started life as not an Xbox exclusive, and then you just fell into the unfortunate situation of being uh, being required to be the saving grace of this entire brand. So good fucking luck. It's an impossible task, and uh, now you just got to do it, I guess. Fuck so anyway that's i guess all i gotta say now for redfall i will continue to play a lot of it this week and over the weekend because i like it i enjoy it quite a bit i'm really glad that i get to continue to play it pissed as hell that i'm playing it on my pc where i don't like playing games because i'd rather play it on my xbox i probably will download it and play it on my series x just just for shits and giggles i want to see how bad it is compared to pc because maybe i would hate this game way more if i was playing on console maybe i would go oh oof, it's much better on pc maybe that's why people hate it so much i don't know but I am curious, like morbidly curious just to see how bad it would be on my Xbox compared to my PC. But um, yeah, that's it. I would love to hear your guys' takes on, on Redfall. My guess is there are a lot of closeted Redfall admirers like myself. There are a lot of people out there who are probably like, you know what? Yeah, the game's a little rough around the edges. It's a it's a pretty good game. I like it because that's where I'm at for sure. And I'm, and I'm sure there's a lot more people like that. And listen. I know there are some people who genuinely hate the game, and that's fair. It, they, they, they gave you a half-baked product. You deserve to not like it. And there are probably also some people out there who absolutely love it, and they're just fucking like, I don't I don't get what the fuss is about. This game's great. And those people are maybe need to go to a ward or something. I don't know. But regardless of the fact, Redfall, you uh, you're, you're, you read you read 
fault from grace. All right. That's it for all the big news this week. Uh, other than, oh, I guess we got a couple of wrap-ups I threw down here just because Games of Gold and Game Pass stuff. So, real quick, um, the May's Games of Gold title, these these were uh, announced like right after we recorded last week. So, for the month of May, you do have Star Wars Episode One Racer. It used to be called Pod Racer, I think. Uh, but it's available all month long. Um, and then you get pl- Puzzle Platformer HOA uh, HOA. I don't think it's supposed to be uh, read as Home Organization Associate Home homeowner association anyway uh, available may 16th to june 15th uh whatever games of gold sucks uh game pass doesn't suck though and we have a couple games to go over so obviously from xbox wire uh here's your update for game pass this week we already know obviously redfall is available now and as we mentioned at the top of the show ravenlock is on cloud console and pc as the day this game goes live or the, the day this podcast goes live um so it's a day one game pass title it's your zelda clone looks pretty cool also on May 8th, we got also on May 8th, we got Weird West Definitive Division coming to Game Pass for Xbox. Shadow Run Trilogy coming to PC Game Pass. That's actually a really good deal. Fuga Melodies of Steel 2 on Cloud Console PC on May 11th. And then that's a day one Game Pass game as well. I'll have to look at that. I don't know about that game. Um, also notable, uh, Grounded is getting a super duper update, which is available this week. Uh, the, the excerpt reads, Word is buzzing around Grounded's backyard regarding the new Wasp neighbor, a duplication machine, uh, new home decor, including a hot tub and handy gnat to help you with your construction, and so much more in the new super duper update. Uh, shout out to Grounded. Great game. A really good game. Again, not going to push people out to go buy an Xbox, but really good game um also just shout out it looks like <laughs> obsidian developer obsidian you and uh you you and playground games are the only fucking teams that xbox has that seem to get it right every time but anyway i'll also have some games leaving game pass this month so or you know in, in about a week on may 15th so just be mindful if you're interested in playing these games before we leave leaves cloud console and pc dang and rampa 2 goodbye despair anniversary edition leaves cloud console and pc i thought that just came there recently Hearts of Iron uh, 4 come, or is leaving PC, uh, or is it 6? I don't know. It's 4. Her Story leaves PC uh, on May 15th, and Umurangi, Gener- Umurangi, Umurangi Generation Special Edition, whatever, all leaving Game Pass. Get me out of here. All right, guys. Let's talk about the important enough. That's all. That's it for all the news. Let's talk about the important enough news now. Stories important enough to make the podcast, but not important enough to warrant their own discussion, of which we have a, a handful here. So let's blast through them, and then we'll get to the best part of the, of the podcast, your comments. Starting off with uh, VGC says, Respawn has announced that Star Wars Jedi Survivor's first major post-launch patch for PS5 and Xbox uh, is coming this Friday to address a lot of issues. Apparently, the game's fucking broken on consoles sometimes. Uh, or, or no, it's it's fucked up on PC. It's good on consoles, right? I don't know. The game seems like it's got some issues, though. Uh, next up, Microsoft will roll out a new version of the Xbox home screen to testers this week. The platform holder said it's experimenting with changes to Xbox's home screen on consoles for several months. And the update design rolling out this month is uh, available for Alpha Skip Ahead, Alpha Ring users on the Xbox Insider program. So look out for that. It looks pretty slick. I saw some images rolling around. Doesn't look too, too different, but it looks nice. It looks a little more... Uh, a little more simplistic and modern. Uh, next up, Microsoft has launched a new Game Pass friend referral sc- scheme. Enables Game Pass Ultimate and PC Game Pass members to give up to five friends a 14-day free Game Pass trial. Free uh, friend refer- uh, referrals invitations can be accessed via the Game Pass home screen. Players must be new to Game Pass to redeem the offer. So I guess that's their new Game Pass for a dollar kind of scheme these days. Uh, next up, uh, a release date for the delayed Xbox One version of Firaxis developed Marvel Midnight Suns has been revealed. The last gen console version was released digitally on May 11th with no plans for physical release, but uh, that's uh, that's your update altogether. The, ga- the game was canceled on Switch. It was supposed to come on Switch around that time as well, but canceled. Next up, uh, EA have announced that on June 16th, they will release F123, the latest entry in the Codemasters developed racing series for Xbox Series S, X, and PC. Fall Guys Season 4 Creative Construction will launch next week, developer Mediatonics said. Uh, set for release May 10th, uh, the headline ed- edition will be a creative in game level editor and tester for players to create custom rounds and then share with the community. That's fucking awesome, like a Mario Maker Halo Forge feature for Fall Guys. I think that's a really fun idea. 
Next up, a 30th anniversary video for Mortal Kombat uh, has was you know potentially is hinted at the uh, a reset for the game's timeline. The official Mortal Kombat Twitter account posted a video on Monday, uh, which thanked players for supporting the series for 30 years, but also notes that we're just getting started. The video mainly has accomplished a thank you messages from developers over the years. However, it ends with a brief clip teasing an upcoming Mortal Kombat 12 game. Uh, that it may wipe the storyline clear and start with a new universe altogether. A great jump on point for newer fans, I guess. Lastly, Eurogamer reports Atomic Heart is getting DLC this summer. We know basically nothing about it, but there's a 20 second trailer that's out now. And yeah, I don't know how that works considering the way the game ends, but I will uh, not say anything else. But I liked that game a lot. Don't know if it needs a DLC, but it's coming. And that's going to do for all of our news this week, you guys. Now we round out the podcast with uh, the comments, the shout outs from YouTube.com. You know how it goes YouTube.com slash Xbox on podcast or at Xbox on podcast at YouTube.com. And uh, you click on the latest episode, you leave a comment on the latest episode, you don't leave a comment on an old episode, otherwise, you're just trying to grind my gears. And we all know how that goes, I guess. You leave any kind of comment you want. You can be a total dickhead or you can be nice. You can say, Jesse, the fact that you even like Redfall a little bit shows me how, how immature you are as a gamer sophisticated gamers like real games like in pokemon scarlet and of course the game boy advance edition of ned's declassified school survival guide uh video game game boy advance video cartridge that came with two episodes from season two installed um and you know other games like god of war and and, uh massy lawn care i don't know our first comment comes in from mr sam torres because he's our favorite and he says, why do I keep buying games that people tell me suck and then they don't and then they don't want uh, and they don't know what the fuck they're talking about? I like this podcast and you read my stuff that I comment in your underwear. Life is grand, ladies and gentlemen. I sure am in my boxers right now. Uh, why do I keep buying games? People tell me suck and then they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. That is a uh, that is story of my life. Sam Torres. This is why I. I enjoy, I, I deeply enjoy, you know, when it, when a new game comes out, seeing the discourse. I like to see what the chatter on Twitter and Reddit uh, is like. I like to see what some of my favorite YouTubers have to say about it. I like to see what the mainstream outlets have to say about it. I like to see what my favorite podcasts have to say about it. I, I, I do enjoy the reception and the feedback people have for games. I think it's just fun to get that, that temperature read on kind of where the industry's at. But I try to never let that dictate how I experience and view games because I have the same experience as you do. People tell you a game sucks and they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Or they tell you a game rocks and they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Obviously, everyone's tastes are different, subjective. That makes sense. But yeah, man, I just feel like so often people don't know what the... Like, shut up, dude. Shut up. People people just don't like good shit is what I found out. And that's a little bit how I feel about Redfall. I understand the the hate for the state in which it was released, but it's a good game. It's a good game buried in some bullshit. It's not a bad game, though. Mr. Malg writes in and says, I'm going to have to educate you, Jesse, uh, or see, educate you, Jesse, on this subject. The ROG ally can't be four to $500 like you suggested because I should I should have put this at the corrections level. Uh, can't be four to 500 bucks because they'd take a huge loss like the way Valve is. Valve can make that money back since they, they make money off Steam purchases, kind of how Sony and Microsoft can sell their consoles cheap and then make it back through game sales. So the fact that the ally might be $700 is a miracle. That's only 50 bucks more than a 500 12 gigabyte steam deck the most pc game handled are around a thousand dollars so that's a good point i as i was saying that last week i was like that sounds like a low ball i don't know enough about this device to really be saying what it should cost so thank you for the correction i probably should put that at the top of the show but no you're you're right and this game this thing is a really powerful machine rog makes their money from selling pc accessories and computer parts and and various accessories like that. They have a fucking phone they make. That's awesome that I don't think anyone buys, but ROG, you know, they make, they make their money off selling hardware. So you're right. They have to sell it at a profit. Um, whereas steam could make whatever the fuck they want. They don't got to sell anything. They could put the fucking steam deck out for free. It wouldn't matter. They make so much hand over fist money just from, own, you know, valve does just from owning steam. So you're absolutely right that they can, you know, the business model is different for these various companies, but I didn't really realize how, how insanely impressive the specs were for this device. And, uh, I think they said, I think it came out this week, right? That it's, that's a $700, uh, that, that is the actual price point is around 700 bucks. Or is that maybe just the rumor still? I don't know, but yeah, good, good correction. Thank you for writing in with that, Mr. Malg. Also, 
Hope you're doing well. Hope the new car's doing well. And hope uh, the, hope you're having a hard time keeping the ladies off you. You know what I mean, bro brother? Brother in Christ. Uh, Dead Captain James writes in and says, Sorry I've been MIA the past few weeks. We're in the process of moving across the country. And we've been house hunting. Great show as always, Jesse. Well, Dead Captain James, no need to apologize. It's just good to hear from you and see that you're alive and well. Congrats on the move. I hope you're uh, moving for all the best reasons. And awesome. I hope you guys find a home you absolutely love. I am also currently in the house hunting market, and it is uh, the most miserable, stressful thing in the entire universe. So I hope you guys have a really smooth experience with that, all things considered. You know, considering our, our government is working very, very hard to make sure that houses are exclusively for very, very rich people and complete assholes who want to flip houses for profit because they're too lazy to contribute anything to society. But hey, man, happy for you and your family. Hope all is well. Always good to hear from you. Take the time to do what you got to do. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family and do what you, you know, live your life, man. You're the favorite. You're the OG, Ted Captain James. No pressure, but the whole world is, you know, the fate of the world rests on your shoulders. Anyway, Cronky writes in and says, I really am shocked that the CMA blocked the deal with uh, Activision and Microsoft. I'm super disappointed too, because I want the backwards compatibility of Raven titles and High Moon titles uh, on Game Pass on Xbox. I really hope the deal gets through with the appeals court. Uh, P.S. I kind of feel like Microsoft saying the U.K. is a bad place for tech and business is kind of like a threat. The prime minister jumped at, at that and ran to calm things down at, um, with Microsoft after that. I'm pretty sure the CMA is going to get internal pressure to reverse this. That's a good point. And uh, I, while I don't – it's like it's weird because like, I don't hope that happens because I don't like corporations having that kind of power over political entities – but in this instance, it's like it's so fucking stupid that they denied it. And the reason for why they denied it is so stupid. And I just want this to be done and approved and over with so Tencent can't buy Activision. And so we don't have to hear about this story ever again. But, yeah, I mean, those are – no, that's some that's some good additional feedback. Um, probably should put that in the Activision stuff because uh, I th I th no, I think, I think some good – yeah, some good uh, analysis for sure. I love that. Why does the UK think they're going to be like the next tech hub? You got to fucking – well, you know what? Maybe they will be because it's always rainy there. Uh, like San Francisco, and uh, it's a miserable place. So just like San Francisco. All joking aside, I've never been to San Francisco. Ha, 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 ha. All joking seriously aside, I've also never been to the UK. So please, if you're a UK listener, do not leave me one star review and get salty. I'm being sarcastic. I'm being, I'm just being young. I'm just being young. Compassion Choice LLC writes in and says, well, hello, beautiful. As far as the division goes, I put up a decent amount of hours into the first game. And a lot of hours into the second one. My takeaway is that the second one is the better game. Either one you play, uh, either one you play, you'll get how the game plays within the first one to five hours. And if you enjoy that game loop, then it's the exact same thing over and over, for better or for worse. Also, better with friends. But we all know that you don't play with people. Good luck. Well, I do. I do play with people sometimes. Hey, I, I asked my nephew if he would play Division Two with me, and he said yes. And then he asked me to get on 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 PC, and then I ignored his text. So there's that. But yeah, no, I I, I think you're. I think I'm already experiencing what you're talking about. Because yeah, I'm I'm about five hours into the into the Division One, and yes, it is very much what it is. The game opens up. It's like kind of cool cutscene, pretty brief. Create your character, and then boom, here's the game. All it has to offer, and it is this forever on repeat. Enjoy. That is kind of what The Division is, but you know what? It's a fun loop. It's not groundbreaking. It's not the best thing I've ever played, but it is fun, and it's a cool world. I like the I like the synopsis for the, for the, for that game's universe. I think it's pretty cool, actually. Uh, Did Captain James replied to you and says, I had the opposite experience. I love Division 1, but fell off Division 2 very hard. Something about it wasn't fun. I just realized Division has the same initials as Destiny. Um, I do plan on playing both these games, so I hope I, I hope I enjoy them both, but we'll see. Uh, I'm definitely interested in that new free-to-play one that they're working on, Heartland. It looks pretty good. Our final comment of the week comes from Adam Zs, who says, Cat emoji, I have no idea how to read my name either, but my wife and I say Adam Zs, so I guess that's the best way to spell it. Yesterday, I ate a Big King Double XL and Baking King at Burger King. Good stuff. We don't have better in Germany. I'm waiting for Redfall. Did you eat Burger King here in America? And you're saying that in Germany you don't have these menu items? You got Burger King in Germany. Don't don't fucking lie to me, Adam Z's. All right. I am looking at the Burger King German menu right now. Oh, look at that. You lied. You said don't have better in Germany. That's so funny. You lied because I'm here looking at their menu and the fucking cheeseburger nuggets 
crunchy pepper chicken sandwich. King's, what's that, Harissa? Okay, first of all, Burger King looks really good in uh, in Germany. Second of all, all the sodas are ice cream floats, which is also awesome. So that's that's cool. But I, I got to ask the question, why the fuck? You know how, like, when you look at fast food pictures, like, obviously they're photoshopped and enlarged to show texture and they do all the touch-ups to make the food look extra delicious. Um, the food on the German Burger King menu does not look like Photoshop to make it look more delicious. It looks like Photoshop to make it look like you're buying a cartoon instead of food. Like this burger looks so saturated, so smoothed over, so, so like just polished up that it, it looks like, it looks like food in a comic book. It doesn't look like real food. So this actually doesn't, doesn't get my, my appetite going, but I am jealous because God damn, your menu's way bigger in Germany. You got Ben and Jerry's ice cream on the menu at Burger King. What the fuck is this? What is happening? King snacks, chili cheese fries with jalapenos, chili cheese nuggets, plant-based nuggets. Why the fuck is that the case? And then, you know, here we just get the fucking chicken fries and your order's always wrong. What the hell, Germany? I don't know what you're talking about because it seems like you guys got, you got vegan mayonnaise on the menu. What the hell is happening? Sour cream at, at Burger King? Okay. All right, Adam Z's, stop lying. You know in Germany you got good Burger King shit going on. But yes, the Big King Double XL and the Bacon King. Fuck, the Bacon King is so good. I've had one one time in my life, and hopefully I will never have it again because I think I will go into cardiac arrest immediately if I have one. But damn good sandwich. You're absolutely right. Adam Z's, thank you for writing in. Hope you enjoyed your Burger King. Hope you continue to enjoy your food. Uh, same goes to all of you guys. Hope you enjoy your food. That's it for this week. Remember for next week, don't be shy. Reply. But now it's time to end the podcast, turn up the music, uh, tune me out, and hopefully you guys have a great week. Um, excited to hear what you guys think about Redfall. Um, excited to see what you think about where this, what this means for Starfield, what this means for the future of Xbox. But you know, in the meantime, take a deep breath. All is not lost, gamers. We will recuperate and we will come back stronger. That is what we Team Greens tend to do. Uh, in the meantime, please regain your energy by going to Burger King and ordering off the German menu just to really frustrate the fuck out of the underpaid, under uh, uh, mistreated employee who has no control over the situation. That would be not a funny thing to do, so don't actually do that. Um, but please, en enjoy some delicious food. Play some good video games, whether that be Redfall or not. And uh, enjoy some time with those you love. Guys, happy house hunting. And until next week, power your dreams. Power your dreams.